Welcome to Blooming Wildwood Homestead. Today I'm going to be potting up the plants that I started in the soil blocks a few weeks ago. They are a little bit on the larger side and probably should have been done a little while ago, but today we're going to go ahead and get those taken care of so that they're ready for transplanting in a couple more weeks. <music> I am super excited with how these plants have been coming along. And as you can see, we have sort of a variety of growing stages here. The tomatoes are looking amazing and should have been repotted probably a week ago or more. Um, we've got some lettuce that's ready to go out here. This is going to go into the little hoop hut that I have. I will also put the um, pak choy out there as well. And then I've got a few flowers that need to be potted up like the chamomile and the marigolds. And then I've got some other soil blocks back here with flowers that are just starting to come up. So I'm not going to be able to plant those out this time and that's gonna be just fine. I'll show you how to kind of work that whole situation. And then here, same sort of thing. The tomatoes have gone wild and I have peppers that are all varying stages. So some of the peppers I think are ready to go ahead and pot up. However, I have some other peppers that have just started, like this little guy here. He just started coming up and is definitely not even ready to pot up. And then in my other flat, I have some brassicas, cabbage, some broccoli, all of that's going to get potted up. Spinach, again, should have already been planted out into the hoop house. And I have a few. Um, oh, the lavender in the back. So we'll plant the lavender. We'll probably go ahead and pot that up as well. Here we just have our potting soil. I've moistened it with a little bit of water so that it will absorb any of the water as I am taking care of the transplants. And then I sprinkled a little bit of fertilizer on top. I will link below to the Dr. Earth fertilizer that I use. I'm just gonna go ahead and mix that in and then we'll be ready to go ahead and pot up. Okay, you are about to see the magic of using the soil box. I have gone ahead and um, flipped the tray around because what I'm going to pot up from this tray is a few of these flowers. So the marigolds and the German chamomile. However, the petunias are definitely not ready to plant up yet. And I am just now, now mind you, all of these plants were planted at the same time. I am just now seeing the echinacea start to germinate and come up. Probably because I didn't do it right. However, you know, we'll see. So that's just starting to come. I don't wanna disturb any of those plants. And then of course, the rest of that container is going to go into the hoop house as soon as it's not pouring down rain and I can take you out there. <clears throat> so to prepare, I'm going to put a little bit of soil in my pot. Some of you might be wondering why I would be doing so much potting up. When you live in town and you're trying to do more of an urban homestead type of a deal, I just don't have a big greenhouse or any place to put my plants to keep them nice and protected outdoors, which means I need to leave them in the house longer underneath the grow light. And that requires potting things up because I'm just not ready to plant them outside at this point in time. This was my first time really trying flowers and I think I realized why I haven't done them in the past. They just take so long to germinate. It just is not worth it. At least for my small setup. Here is where the magic happens. I would recommend taking an old fork. If you don't have one already at your house, you can always get one from Goodwill or a thrift store. And if you just kind of use it to gently, you don't want to disturb the roots, gently 
lift that soil block out of there and look at that we have beautiful root growth happening nothing has been stunted <clears throat> now we can carefully slide this into the new pot put a little more soil around it and it's good to go I will put a marker in here so I don't forget what it is and I really should have probably used the same color that I had on the other one however I didn't so here we are <clears throat> then I'm gonna bring that over put it in the tray and I think I can get three across here and maybe five lengthwise before I take it and put it back underneath the grow light. So we'll do another one. Wow. Look at that. These are just fantastic. We have lots of root growth here. Super healthy. By using the soil block, I haven't disturbed any of that root growth. And now I'm just giving it extra room to spread out and continue to gain strength. I have one more here. It kind of, I missed it. Looked a little bit sketchy, but the roots underneath are still looking good. And I think I can get it propped back up. So we'll give it a go. The worst thing that happens is it doesn't come back around and it was a loss. If I see any roots sticking out a little bit on the side I might push a little soil up next to it just so that it's good to go and then you can see here these chamomile definitely need to come out this is the beauty of using the fork oh yeah look at that Pretty sure there's more than one plant in here, but the chamomile is so fine. I don't think I'm going to separate it out. It's just too hard to try to separate. Now I can leave these completely undisturbed. I'll take the rest of the plants out and like I said, put in the hoop house and that flat is good to go. There's what we have so far. Now we're going to take a look at the brassicas next. We are going to plant up the brassicas. As you might have noticed, I have more than one plant in the same cell block on some of these guys. And I am going to go ahead and separate them out and plant them in two separate pots or however many pots I need. I'm saving the big containers for my tomatoes. Those guys are super tall and need some extra oomph. Okay, so here we've got great root systems on this and I'm just going to gently tease apart these two plants gently gently and you can see here we have great roots on both sides
If I knew I was staying here at this location, I probably would plant these straight outside. We're getting close enough to not having a frost, but I just don't know where I'm gonna be. Makes this year's gardening a little bit tr tricky and challenging. Gently pressing that in there to make sure that the roots have plenty of soil around them. Look how beautiful that is. Ready to go. The brassicas are not going to grow any more roots down at the bottom, but I do like to plant them a little bit deeper just so that it helps give them some stability. I'm going to go ahead and continue on with the rest of these in the same manner and then I'll bring you back for the tomatoes. So I have to show you this little situation that I ended up with here. I need to take the spinach and plant it out in the hoop hut, but somehow or another, as I was planting, I ended up with a couple of tomato seeds falling into my spinach plants and now I've got kind of a mess. So I am going to pot these tomatoes up. I have absolutely no idea what kind they are, but I guess we'll just be in for a surprise when they decide to come out and bear fruit. And then of course my spinach I'll plant outside. With the tomatoes, as they are in the ground, they will actually grow roots all the way up. So I'm gonna plant that pretty deep inside the ground so that I can get a nice, strong root base on it. And there we are. This little guy is going to do great. He'll continue to grow and produce some wonderful fruit. I hope that you enjoyed today's video and that you can see the benefits of using the soil block and just how easy it is to take plants that are started in the soil blocking method using the soil blocking method and transplanting those up into pots or planting it straight out into the garden. Until next time, bye everyone.